Now, I'm delighted to welcome onto the podcast former Ireland and Leinster second row, Devin Toner, who's one of several Irish rugby stars working with Heineken over the next few weeks at some of the some of the best loved local pubs around the country as they're going green all the way. Uh, some of the most colourfully named pubs will be transformed and renamed as the nation gets behind Andy Farrell's side. Some of those being the Silver Key in Cork, Busker Brown's in Galway and Drahada's Grey Goose. So you get the picture of how that's going to work. But Devin, thanks a million for joining us on the, the eve of the World Cup. Great to speak to you. No matter. Thanks for having me. It's um it's been a wild ride over the last four years. So much has so much has gone on in the game, whether it's you look at the squads that are out for the tournament and some of the, the names that have popped up, not just in the last four years, but in the last twelve or eighteen months. Then on the other hand, you look at the the balance of power in the way it's shifted in the game of rugby over the last 18 months or two years as well. But then on the flip side, it ultimately feels like a four-year cycle has has flown by and here we are again. Yeah, it does kind of seem like it's come around very quickly, didn't it? Um, as you say, like a lot has changed in, the, in in that four years. There's a lot of new players in the squad. There's a lot of people, in, at, 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 a lot of lads at their first tournament. Um. So as you say, there's there's a, there's a lot changed. Like what? There's obviously three players that that, that it's their, their 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 fourth tournament. Like so, it's it's not changed for them. And I suppose it's got a bit pretty slow for them. But it's uh no. As you say, like the the, the landscape has changed. The kind of I wouldn't say the power dynamic has changed either. But like obviously Ireland being ranked number one in the world, it's a uh, there's a lot of pressure on the shoulders going in. Um. But obviously, South Africa are getting back strong again. New Zealand, the last eighteen months have been pretty pretty consistent, apart from that loss against South Africa, really. But um, like it's all shaping up to be a really exciting tournament, really. Yeah, and it's funny, and like as you say, Ireland coming in world number one went in as world number one last time around. It feels like a very different type of world number one this time around. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure being number one. Everyone's 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 out to get you, aren't they? Um, but again, it's it's something that we should probably relish. We should uh, like, it's 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 a, it's a pretty good place to be, you know. Where we we always we obviously earned it with a lot of good performances over the last couple of years. Um, but I think we're in a really good spot and I think we should kind of relish being number one uh, and, and kind of like obviously take pride in it and kind of take pride that everyone's, like, everyone's coming after you. Yeah, I, I suppose you've kind of nearly answered the, the next question I was planning to ask. Just the kind of gut feeling going into the tournament. Is it, is it a positive one? Excitement, nervous, nervous excitement? Like how are you, how are you feeling just overall of Ireland's chances as we as we head towards it now? Yeah, it's a bit of everything, really. <laughs> As you say, I am confident. Uh, I I do feel good about the tournament, but there is that nervousness as well. I saw I saw Mike Ross say somewhere, did I? He was like, "We're either going out in the quarters or winning it. There's no in between." Yeah, and that's so that, like as we've said that it's been brought up so many times. But the way the draw has fallen and just the lopsided nature of it, or just just how teams have developed over the last couple of years. Obviously, that is it. It's an annoying element that you look at Ireland and arguably a quarter final is going to be considerably harder than a potential semi final would be. But we'll we won't yeah. dwell on that one. What I what I did want to to talk to you about though is to bring you back to January, February twenty twenty, when Andy Farrell had first taken over and he's coming into his first six nations in charge and you were yeah. you were back in the squad at that stage. Yeah. And yeah. I'd be curious to see what was the what was the general messaging around the time? Was twenty twenty three being spoken about back then, or having just taken over? Was he still in a a short term mindset of just trying to get the feet in under the table and figure out exactly what he wanted mm. to do before thinking about what happens in four years? <sighs> trying to remember back three years ago now, it's kind of hard. But um, no, in, from my recollection, we he didn't talk about the next World Cup. Um, I think the whole thing was he was coming in and he wanted to set his whole stamp on what he was going to do. Um, he wanted to make it a, a, a an environment that people wanted to be in. He wanted people to be able to grow as players and be able to express themselves how they want and actually have like like it be, be like enjoy being in camp and enjoy your company and kind of building an environment that people want to be in. So, um. 
and then it was like it's obviously hard because then obviously COVID hit and then and then so like I I only ended up playing three games under 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 Faz. Um, my last one was against England, and then obviously COVID hit, and then, mm. and then I didn't play the final the, the next two games. But um, he uh, in in the, in in that little period, he was just literally trying to set out a stall of of how he was going to go forward with his ethos and his environment and, and and obviously all the other coaches as well but who was um no from my recollection he didn't he, he, he wasn't he wasn't talking he wasn't talking three years down the road he, he wasn't talking about the world cup quite yet mm. and it was interesting then to see i think by by the end of 2021 he certainly was talking about it publicly uh Never mind how much he was talking about it to, to the squad. You mentioned COVID as well. Like I have wondered over the last couple of years, did did that help in a little way, do you think, with with him being able to figure out exactly what he wanted to do with this squad, where it gave him, you're talking probably six months where he was able to to sit back and not have to worry necessarily about results one after the other, but just actually figuring out a plan and 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 potentially gives him the idea of of thinking down long term stuff. Yeah, yeah, like potentially, it's kind of hard to say yes or no. If yeah. it did help or not. Probably what it did probably help was because a lot of what Faz, uh, what what he what he um bases his obviously success on is is the environment in the team and 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 everyone enjoying the environment and 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 growing as players. So I think over COVID, with all the lockdowns up, because you were spending so much time as players together. You were able to build that kind of that environment and and, and, and that feeling between between the the strength and in, in, in the squad, and um, because obviously when you're going into camp, you're going into camp, you're staying in camp, you're, you're like you, you did a lot of things together. And um, now obviously there was that period at home where everyone was obviously locked up for for, for ages. But then well, when you got the chance to be together, you, you were together. You weren't you weren't you weren't able to to to, to break. Do you mean so that kind of probably built a a a, a, a good uh, good squad there. Have you seen a change in the the playing group over the last few couple of years in the way they deal with the kind of the last minute hiccups and the inconveniences that'll hit a squad and even just the general pressures of of being a team to beat? Like we've seen for the last year or so that any time there's a minor inconvenience, Andy Farrell is nearly celebrating it as this this wonderful thing. Whether it's Johnny Sexton pulling up injured before they take on Australia, a couple of injuries on the eve of a Six Nations game against Wales in Cardiff. And yeah. Andy Farrell genuinely seems to be gleeful at at some of these yeah. things. Like, and it it certainly hasn't affected the players. The Scotland game as well in Murrayfield, for example, where you've Keen Healy throwing line or Josh Van Der Feer oh, throwing line outs yeah. and Keen Healy packing down in Keen a scrum. Over. Yeah. Do you, do you think maybe going back five six years, the the team you would have been in would have struggled to adapt to those situations, or are we making a little bit too much out of the way they're they're adapting now? No, I think uh, adaptability is, is huge, and I think there's another one that, that, that I remember hearing as well down in, in New Zealand when we lost the Maoris, and then you lost the first test as well. I remember him hearing stories of him going around saying, "This is actually what I love. This is going to test us." Do you mean if we come back from this, this is going to be absolutely huge? So, like he was building that that strength within the squad there to be able to adapt to to to, to everything. So it's um it's 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 a huge skill to have to be able to uh to be able to influence players and influence squad and influence people to to to, to do that, but it's um yeah like in years gone by we like we obviously won a fair bit but like we we we, we might have obviously we obviously did fall in a, a, a good few hurdles but hopefully going forward he's 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 built that built that adaptability. Um, earlier on, we mentioned as well, like the way the squads have changed over the last few years, and how some of those players you could have seen well in advance, like Kalen Doris coming through, has been a, yeah. a steady build to the player he is now. But yeah. one of the World Cup bolters, I suppose, in the Ireland squad, Joe McCarthy, who has mm-hmm. really come on this summer, and I I always remember seeing his Leinster debut was alongside yourself in the second row against Cardiff. And I always Cardiff, but we lost the Cardiff. But yeah, but it always stands out because the way Leinster do their team sheets, they have the appearances beside it. And yours was yeah. Devin Toner 271, Joe McCarthy yeah. zero. And I always think back yeah. on that, and it just kind of I think it just emphasizes how far he's come over that game was just over 18 months ago when he was making his Leinster debut. I know, and he was 
ripping up trees in that game. You know, he was he was brilliant. Um, he was probably was in that game. He was probably the, the only player who stuck his hand up and actually played well. Um, but you could see it. You could see it as an attitude in training how how well he, he goes. Like he's a he's a he's a brute of a man. You know what I mean? He's a he's big. He's strong. He's and he works hard. You know. Um, so it's no surprise that he is where he is. Um, I'd like to see him get a fair bit of game game time, whether he is or not. It obviously depends on 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 how everyone else goes. Um, but to be that young at his first World Cup is huge, and and, and to get this experience at that at this level is huge as well. So, yeah, all, all more more credit to him. Like. Yeah, I think whether or not he plays much in this World Cup, we're likely to see him at a couple more down the line as well. Um, mm-hmm. in terms of the actual campaign itself, Ireland. I'm curious to get your thoughts on the the way the schedule has worked out. So, like Ireland start off against Romania this weekend, a game obviously they'd be expected to win. Then mm-hmm. Tonga, it's it's another step up, and after that, you're into the the big stuff. On the flip side, you might have New Zealand and France meeting first up this weekend, and yeah. for them, realistically, that is one big game. There's a little bit of a banana skin against Italy to to navigate through, but ultimately. They have this one big match, and realistically, they probably have a nice four weeks to just slowly build themselves up for a quarter final. If if I'm putting you in the position of of a player, what's what schedule do you think you'd rather have? Would you rather be be able to just slowly tune yourself up towards the bigger games as they're coming, and then have big matches like South Africa, Scotland, and then hopefully a knockout match, or go in for the I ch- you yeah, know, if if if, if, if I was be able to manage yourself, if I was given the cho- if I was given the choice, I think mm. I'd take Ireland's one. To be honest, okay. Um, not I'm like I'm not saying that Romania and Tonga are going to be warm up games, but like, but there are games that we should win, and they're they're compared to the other ones would be not easier, but not like it because it it kind of gives. Uh, first of all, it gives. Johnny, a chance to get back in and 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 and, and play a game and get, and get some games under your belt, and then obviously South Africa is going to be obviously the huge physical one, and then Scotland it's going to be hard, but it wouldn't be as physical as Scot- as, as as South Africa, so um you might be able to not rest a little bit there, but like you know it's not it's not your like it's not your South Africa game, you know, so I kind of like being able to build up into it, um, so that's that would be my preference anyway, I think yeah. In terms of the Irish lineout, probably one of the the iffier elements of the game during the warm up campaign. Would you have any lasting concerns over it coming into this, or do, do you think realistically they'll they'll be able to get it right? No, realistically they'll get it right. Yeah, no, they they they'll, they'll be putting a lot of work into it. Paulie will be putting a lot of a lot of work into it. Um, like there is the the history there of 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 having a very good and efficient lineout. I think we're we can we can back our ball as well. I think our ball has been. Has been on and off, but I think when when we get it right, we get it right. So I think uh, I've a lot of confidence in James Ryan and Hendy and Tyg uh, as callers. Um, I don't know Joe's obviously not a caller either, like, but it's uh, I think I know I would have a lot, uh, yeah, I'd be confident that that'd be okay. Final quick fire questions. This is always th- this is the one we'll be clipping out and either <laughs> using to praise you or shame you, regardless of how <laughs> things go. Um. Who's your World Cup winner, obviously? Who's your World Cup winner? Ireland. Go on. All right. Well, that takes away my second question, which is where do Ireland finish? Um, <laughs> the the other one I want to throw at you then, though, just the, the player you're looking forward to see most that either isn't Irish or isn't Antoine Dupont, because I think that's just too easy of an answer. Oh, right. I haven't really thought about that one. Um... One that I always enjoy watching is Artie Surveyor, to be honest. Right. He's, he's such a class player. He's so hard to play as well. He's such a class player. Um, anyone else from any other teams? Rad, rad, rad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 hard it's hard not to pick any any one of a handful of those Fijian players. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Looking back on the game against England a couple of weeks ago, where they weren't even particularly good, but they just still were able to produce those those few yeah. moments of brilliance so yeah. there we have it Devin Toner's calling Ireland world champions <laughs> although I think although I think as you kind of you mentioned Mike Ross saying it could be very much a case of it's either quarterfinal exit or we're winning the whole thing is that is yeah. that kind of the gut feeling is it yeah there's no in between <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's one or the other <laughs>